oh honey long time no see <laughs> you want gel <laughs> you want gel sit sit you want gel i i help you hey you guys how you guys doing it's time for another chit chat video some things have transpired in the universe so i wanted to talk about it right now before we I promise you wait, but I don't want to wait, to be quite honest. So, y'all know how we do this. I talk about what's going on in my personal life, what I'm watching on YouTube, and what I'm watching on TV. While we're doing this, I'm going to be pre-pouring my hair. I have a hair oil mixture. This will be a separate video. So, personal life, not much has changed besides the fact that JB is really talking to his friends and and cousins you know technology is awesome we're seeing with this new generation that they're able to still have have because put it like this i'm kind of concerned about the generation what's what's the age range i guess like anyone 30 and under they really lack social skills like they really do like we were raised to where you you look people in the eye you greet them you say yes ma'am no ma'am maybe from the south you know you greet people you talk to them this younger generation they just don't know how to talk they don't know how to conversate but jb and you know his friends and his little cousins my nieces and nephew they talk via kids messenger and child they can talk a lot and i mean like a couple of hours throughout the day they're talking um and it's so cute. This this age is just so interesting because they're still learning their personalities and stuff. So I haven't really had a chance to do much from JB. One of the things I wanted to do with him is make sure that his multiplication table is down solid. You guys, my child struggles with the multiplication table and he's going to be going into the fourth grade. This is something he should have learned in second grade. But as you know, most children are on average about two years behind. So this summer, my whole focus was for him to learn the multiplication table. And those of you who don't know, I homeschooled JB for um, first grade. And that main focus was to help him to reading because he was a struggle reader. And now he's doing very, very well. But um, with multiplication tables, he's kind of struggling on it. So we are focusing on skip counting and then the flashcards. And then I'm going to have, girl, look at that gray hair. Look at that. Um, today, JB and I went to Hobby Lobby. Girl, they already got the fall decorations out. I mean, seriously, it's already out. Now, I know one thing. I do need to get some Christmas houses for my, um, what do you call it? My village. Because most of my stuff broke, you guys. Um, when moving here, they got all the scarecrows and stuff out. I'm like, wow, y'all ready to make some money. And there's tons of people in there. Hobby Lobby is really big in the South in general, especially in Texas anyway. Hot. We know it's hot. Let me tell you something. It is so hot. Now when I'm going out, I make sure I have plenty of water because the first the few times I've been out, I've been getting dizzy, you guys. And so I'm like, I definitely need to be drinking more water because... It's too hot. It is just way too hot. I know JB went to go swim in a couple of days. I'm like, uh-uh, baby. It's too hot for all that. You can go and sit in the bathtub. I feel a bathtub. <laughs> go sit in the bathtub. I fill the bathtub up for you. And you can sit in there because it's too hot to be outside, child. Way too hot. So that's it with the personal life. What I'm watching on TV. More true crime as it is, child. I'm addicted to it. I know I shouldn't watch it that much, but it is what it is. True crime. I kind of laid off on Kendra G. She just got so many people coming on there that doesn't make any sense. It's really interesting to see people that do poly relationships and swingers. I actually used to, I doubt if she watches my channel, but I used to work with someone way back in phoenix who was into the swingers lifestyle y'all be surprised and there's there's quite a few quite a few excuse me of swingers in the phoenix area specifically a town called anthem which is north of phoenix going towards beautiful sedona but if you would look at her you would have never guessed of course you would have never guessed she was a swinger in that lifestyle very quiet mousy um and she was like there's not a lot of you guys <laughs> One day she told me, she's like, there's not a lot of you guys in this lifestyle. I said, what? I said, oh, no. Uh -uh. First of all, we're way too, way too jealous and way too crazy and way too protective of our 
significant others. There's no way. I'm pretty sure there's some, but not a lot. I know you probably, uh, uh, you know, <laughs> probably upset, a little upset about that. But child, she told me that, um, why am I talking about this? Oh, because of Kendra G. But anyway, she told me one of the the main reason why her, uh, her and her husband separated was because of, and eventually got a divorce is because the person that they were swinging with ended up getting pregnant because he was, you know, doing stuff on the side because you're supposed to have, um, you're supposed to have permission, <laughs> especially if you're married, you're supposed to have permission, apparently. He was doing things on the side and she ended up getting pregnant. They ended up falling in love and that's it. Girl, let's get into this Carly Russell. Let me tell you something. I am more frustrated and just upset, pissified. I know that's not a word. That's a nasty word too. Um, I am more upset. I don't really think, you know, I've been seeing the memes and stuff. I don't, you know, it's funny later on, but it's too soon for me to be laughing about it. It's just too much. But this is my thing. <sighs> Those of you who don't know. Carly Russell is a 25-year-old black woman here who went missing, supposedly, in Alabama after she was on the phone with her boyfriend, with her brother's girlfriend, excuse me, and said that there was a toddler on the side of the road. And then all of a sudden, sudden, excuse me, there's, there's you know, commotion and she's gone and she's supposedly missing. They put out an alert. Everyone was looking for her, praying, and then she shows up at her house two days later. Now the authorities are saying that there was not a toddler missing in that area, one. And two, her story just isn't matching up. There are way too many unanswered questions. So it may be a hoax. Here is my thing. You wasted so much we wasted so much time money effort looking for this young woman when there are other people who are missing children in the area who are missing and those resources could have been towards those real missing peoples and cases that are going on these folks don't have time for you because you want a freaking netflix deal or whatever the hell you this is if it's if it's not true and if it's not true, if it is a hoax, there is no way she could have done this by herself. Because by herself, excuse me, because where was she at for two days? Like seriously, where was she at for two days? What was? She, there's no way somebody, a couple. I think a couple of people. Again, if it is a hoax, one, you got some mental issues. Two, a couple of people were in on it. I'm glad she's back. If she was really, you know, and she escapes. But then there's all of this evidence she found, they found, excuse me, the authorities have found on her computer. I don't get this shit. It kills me that people don't know that there is an entirely different area that forensics go into, which is called tech forensics, I guess, or cells, you know, where they're basically going to your cell phone. You can delete your calls, you can delete your emails, they can still find it, baby. They can still find it. So people are dumb enough to do stuff like, this is an example, how to cut up a body, best ways to poison a person, um, poisons that don't show up on reports, uh, how long does it take for someone to die from Benadryl? How much does it take to die from Benadryl? How many hours does it take to die from Benadryl? How much can I get if my husband dies and I don't have, you know, just, and then they go to Walmart or whatever store on camera buying, they kill, they literally be like this. Let me show you with bleach and gloves. And then they look around at the camera like, <laughs> my light went out. <laughs> and then they have the receipt of buying the gloves, the shovel, the plastic bags, the zip ties and all that, the, the receipt is in the car. Like, are you, are you dumb? Then you have your cell phone on. Everything's tracking you. You keep your cell phone on while you go wherever the hell you're going to, to, you know, dis, discard the body, whatever the hell. It just amazes me that people don't. And maybe because they just don't. They're, they're not. First of all, if you're in a situation anyway where you're <laughs> trying to commit a crime, of course you're going to do something. If it was me, I wouldn't do this. Be smart. 
Go to a public library. Wear a disguise. Disguise yourself as someone else. Go on an off-peak day. Go to the public library. Ask to borrow somebody else's life. Go on someone else's laptop. Keep your cell phone at home. Keep everything that can track you at home. But you know what? Just don't commit any crimes. Don't kill nobody. Don't do anything heinous. And then you won't be in this situation. So, y'all, I'm really curious to know, one, if this was a hoax, why did she do it? So, oh, okay. So, back to the what they found on her computer. They found stuff like... I guess like either book deals or movie deals she had just watched Taken. It's just way too much of coincidence. And then all of a sudden you're calling 911 because you see a toddler on the side of the road. Now, I honestly don't think that she thought they would get this much traffic. I don't think she, she thought that. Really, I really don't think she did. And because of this, now they're really going to make an example out of her. Now, she's not the only one that has done this. Y'all don't remember that one uh, woman, she was a, a white woman, she was a mother and all that, who actually went jogging and was missing. But this chick was missing not for two days. She was missing for a while. She had lost weight. She was battered. Come to find out, she was staying with some ex-boyfriend. He, She had him to beat her up. So, so it looked like that she was actually, I don't even know why she did that either. Just crazy. Like, why would you put your loved ones through some stuff like that? You know, why would, why would you do that? Why? You're, you're that, you know, if this is a hoax, I'm not saying that Carly's is a hoax, but right now the evidence is not looking too good, sis. And this is the thing that, that, that's just so frustrating and why I'm not really laughing at any of the memes and stuff yet because my thing, like I said, we wasted all this resources finding your ass. There are over 20,000 black women that are missing. Young women, young girls that are missing in this country. And you want to do some dumb shit like this. If it's fake, again. <sighs> I'm glad she's back home. I'm hoping that you know, we can come to some some type of conclusions. We can get some answers. Because, we. Were, I mean, I was praying for her. I was praying and, and hoping to God. Because typically, if they're not found within, we know, we know. If they're not found within 48 hours, the chances of us ever finding them again is slim to none. That's just facts, right? But now she's home. And apparently, she is traumatized. So, she really can't be speaking on anything right now which is this is what her family is saying right now okay and then later i will say that besides that child looking at the testament the testimony of um testament betty broderick ass i shouldn't laugh betty Bro look let me tell you something it's about two hours long and those of you don't know betty broderick we've all heard i think most of us have heard of the betty broderick case if you haven't girl let me fill you in betty broderick betty broderick was a wife and mother from, I believe it was like 89 or 90, um, married to Dan Broderick, who went and um, got married to someone else, Linda, a paralegal at his job. Betty wasn't having it. And she ended up murdering Linda and Betty, I'm sorry, Linda and Dan in their house, in their home. This is the thing um, that it's just, for the longest, I was like, you know, that's what he gets, yada, yada, yada. You know, not necessarily that's what he gets. It's, he was the cause of all this because um, of how he treated Betty. And also throughout their divorce, even though she was awarded like $9,000 a month. Um, and she was doing a lot of petty stuff. But, at, you know, at the end of the day, he made her life a living hell. A living hell and Dan was well known in San Diego San Diego excuse me around that time so many of the lawyers would not take on Betty's case they just wouldn't do it because of Dan and the pull that he had and I felt so bad for her you know like a, a lot of women did sided with her in this case because she helped him to get through medical school and law school raising the kids working from home you know what she was you know keeping other kids um while raising their kids i think she even suffered a miscarriage at one point and it's just horrible i think he even had her institutionalized there for a minute 
absolutely horrible. I read one comment where they said that um, Dan and Linda sent Betty their wedding picture and was like, eat your heart out, you fat pig. You know, they did stuff like that. But at the end of the day, at the end of the day, yes, Dan was definitely on some narcissistic gaslighting shit. Excuse my language. Betty was also narcissistic to you guys because she... She would do stuff like drop those kids off and was like, here, you, you want to be uh, up there with your whore? Here's the kids. So she would drop them off, drop them off. And here, here you go. Here's the kids. <sighs> so the part of the, um, when she was on the stand and the defense attorney was like, did you ever, you were writing letters you write letters. You've written hundreds of letters to people outside, to celebrities. Have you ever written a letter to Dan and Linda's family? You know, or are you sympathetic? And she's basically like, I couldn't write them a letter. She's basically like, I'm sympathetic to them. So she's, in layman's terms, she's basically sympathetic towards the family, but she's not sympathetic about, she's not sorry for killing those folks, y'all, at the end of the day. And that makes her a true psychopath. She is not sorry for that. She's not. Speaking of YouTube back again, though, I I love when I come across, this is free, a free movie on YouTube. Uh, nothing but trouble is on YouTube for free. That's that crazy freaking movie. It's almost like Beetlejuice meets hunted halloween stuff it is funny it's a little scary it's dark comedy it has Chevy chase demi moore dan Aykroyd, and so dan Aykroyd and john 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 he died of a heart attack back in the 90s john candy is that his name, y'all? I watched this movie when I was a kid, like everybody else in the 90s. Digital Underground was saying, all around the world, same song. Same song? Same song? I don't know. But Tupac was there, and I didn't realize that was Tupac. I mean, I didn't, because my family didn't really listen to that type of rap, but my parents, at least. But yeah, Tupac was in there. But let me tell you something. That scene where they're all at the table... And they're eating those nasty, to this day, I can't eat a hot dog. They're eating those nasty hot dogs. And he has that train going around. That Aykroyd, like John Candy, I'm pretty sure I'm getting his name wrong. They play multiple characters in this movie. And I think Dan Aykroyd, Aykroyd brother actually produced or directed the movie. But at one part of the scene, Dan Aykroyd plays this old man, right? He plays the sheriff or the, the, the judge. He plays this old judge who's like 105 years old. He ain't got no leg, no hair, nothing. One part, one scene, Chevy Chase is looking at him and his nose turns into a penis. And I could not stop laughing. Y'all, I was like, what the hell? <laughs> I don't think I remember that part when I was a kid. If I did, I just didn't notice it. So Bird Box Barcelona. So now we over in Barcelona. We got to cover our eyes and shit too. But there's a twist on this. Spoiler alert. There is a twist where there's one guy who can go with seeing whatever they are. And he can fight it off. And I often wonder that. Because in the original, in the original movie, Bird Box, um the people that were able to see them and not, they were typically mad or insane or had some type of cognitive issues. But, and still with this, in this movie, there is someone who's able to see them and he's able to see, I want to, I honestly think they're demons. Do we know what the entity is? Are there demons? Are they, what are they? So I think there's some type of de demonic entity. And they appear as people, your loved ones, or even monsters. And it causes you to either kill people or kill yourself. Um, so I didn't watch all of it. I watched bits and pieces because it's in, it's in Spanish. It's either in Spanish or Portuguese. But you can put, you know, the English captions on. Um, but yeah, Bird Box. I watched bits and pieces of it. Um, Sweet Magnolia Season 3 is out. I'm going to go ahead and finish up Season 2 and watch season three okay 
Child, I'm watching this. I actually stopped watching a couple of scenes of it when I came in here. This movie called Run, Rabbit Run on Netflix. It was like in the top 10 uh, movies for a while. And I'm like, let me see what this stuff is about. Australian based. And first off, Run, Rabbit Run. I'm like, what in the dunny dark old hell is this going to be about? Spoiler alert. So this woman, like in the first five or 10, well, no, like, the first 30 minutes, she's bitten by some rabbit. I'm like, rabbits can bite? Huh, I didn't know that. I mean, I know they eat and they got teeth, but I didn't know that they would like attack you. What in the hell? I'm not, now I'm getting upset because I own oh, a little afraid because I'm always back here talking to these rabbits and shit. They may roll up on me. They, they could be some damn gangster thug ass rabbits. And so I need to be careful. Do rabbits carry rabies, child? Mm -mm. No. So anyway, this rabbit, y'all know I'm extra. This rabbit bites her, right? And I'm like, ooh, this is this is how the spirit is. This is how you got that spirit in you. The rabbit bit you and you're going to be seeing shit, right? But no, it's not like that. It's weird as hell. Then it cuts to her little girl who's wearing this rabbit mask. And she calls her Bunny, which is cute because my niece is named Bunny. We, well, we nickname her Bunny. And her Bunny goes to school wearing this mask. And she's like, why don't you take that off, sweetheart? She's like, no, I'm like, you better take that damn mask off. <laughs> Child, y'all gotta be, let me tell you something. I'm gonna be my, nice for the first time, maybe even the first two times, but after a while, I'm gonna check you. That reminds me, I had to pull over recently with JB. I randomly do that because overall, JB's a good kid, but I had to pull over and let him know. Oh, we in Texas now. They don't care about you spanking your kid in public out here. We're in the South. As long as you're not beating a kid up, they would be like, good job, mom. <laughs> they don't care. Anyway, run, rapid run. It's spooky as hell. Evil ass, weird ass kids, which I like. So we're going to see what that's about. But that's it, you guys. I'm going to continue doing my hair. I don't know what's going on. I'm supposed to be pre-pointed. Hoping it turns out right. Okay? All right. Then. Bye.